What's going on everyone? I appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Resident Evil 8 Village video. In this one, I'm going to be showing y'all what happens when we complete every single one of these labyrinth puzzles that we can find around in the game. Now there's four of these in total, and when I came across the first one in Castle Dimitrescu where Duke is at, I was immediately intrigued. I was first off wondering what the heck is this thing. So I decided to examine this book that was right next to this labyrinth, and it turns out this explains what this is. As you can see here it states, Norstein's Labyrinths. I'm sorry by the way if I do mispronounce anything. I'm not used to saying a lot of these things that I am saying within this game to be real with y'all. But yeah, as you can see it states a craftsman of the late 19th century Norstein was branded a heretic in his homeland. He wandered the lands until he settled in a remote village. Norstein then created four labyrinths. The castle, the house on the hill, the water wheel, and the Iron Tower. Upon their completion, he put a gun to his temple and took his own life. Jeez, what a twist there. Um, anyways, the next page reads, Each labyrinth is unique and requires its own specially crafted metal ball to operate. Each one contains crystallized human remains, which are said to be Norstein's four beloved wives. The labyrinths are their graves. So yeah, within this book, we learn quite a bit about these. First off, we learn most importantly that we are going to need a metal ball for each labyrinth in order to unlock the treasure that's within these. We can find different kind of skulls within each of these. And apparently, oddly, these are supposed to be Norstein's four wives remains. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be showing you where all the metal balls are located at in order to solve each of these labyrinths. I'm also gonna be showing you what happens when we do unlock all of these. And for something special to add onto this, I'm going to be running through the game again and solving each of these labyrinths and actually keeping the remains in my inventory to see if anything special triggers if you have all of them in your inventory at once. So I'm not gonna be selling them to Duke immediately. I'm kinda of curious if we may encounter Norstein's ghost or something when we have all of his wives' remains that he placed within each of these labyrinths. I mean, I don't know. It's just a theory I have right now. I'm also kind of curious about the four founders treasures too. Like, is there something more to them besides just selling them to Duke? I don't know. It's got me genuinely curious if the developers added in anything secretive like that. I mean, it doesn't sound too over the top. So fast forward through a whole new story. It turns out nothing special happens when you do have all of his wife's remains within your inventory. Um, I was thinking, you know, we might have encountered, like, his ghost or something. That would have been pretty cool. Unless we have to be somewhere specific with all of these remains in our inventory. But, as far as it seems, nothing special does Chain React. Since I'm on the topic of trying to get something special to Chain React, I wonder if something secretive Chain Reacts, if we have all the four founders' special treasures that we can get in the game. Maybe we have to go somewhere specific or something, like I was mentioning before, with these remains. But it wasn't a total letdown. You can actually sell these for quite a bit to Duke in total. I believe you can get 73k for selling all of them to him. Which could help you out with some upgrades that you may need or something that you want to purchase from Duke. As we know, upgrades can be extremely expensive in the game. But yeah, as you can see, you can sell the Crimson Skull for 8k. This is the one that we found in the Castle's Labyrinth. Oh. You've brought in something special. Anyways, for the one that we could find in Beneviento's area, we could sell for 15k, as you can see, the Onyx Skull. Aha! And so far, it seems like Duke has nothing special to say with any of these that I've sold him. But anyways, you can also sell the one that you get from Moreau's area for 20k, as you can see. Aha! <laughs> he keeps saying, aha! each time I sell him something. But anyways, lastly here, uh, the one that we get from Heisenberg's factory, we can sell for 30K. So yeah. Aha! <laughs> Again? Man! <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. But uh, yeah, that's uh, what you can get total. So yeah, that's what happens if you unlock every single one of these. You can get 73K from Duke which once again can help you 
with upgrades or something that you may be needing from him. Like I was mentioning before, upgrades can be really expensive. Um, so that's what really makes it worth it. And you also get an achievement, trophy, whatever platform you play on, you get some gamer points. You get 15 gamer points for getting the ball rolling, which is solving one labyrinth. But keep in mind, you don't get gamer points for solving all of the labyrinths, just one of them. So if the gamer points is something that you're more interested in, then I suggest just, you know, of course, solving one of them and not solving all of them. Hopefully this helps you save some time on whether or not you're going to solve each of these. But yeah, if you are interested in solving each of these labyrinths, I suggest sticking around in the video. Now I'm going to be showing you how to get to each metal ball that you need to unlock each of these labyrinths. Starting off here with Castle Demutrask. Alright, so once you got Demutrask's key and you came up the elevator at the courtyard, you then just want to head over through this door by using her key. And by the way, don't worry about missing the part where you come up the elevator in the courtyard because it's part of the main story. You'll eventually come across that part. And when you do, this is where you can go and get the metal ball because you are going to need her key to get in here. But yeah, once we're in here, we just want to head up the stairs. And at the top here, just head left through this door. Now within here, this is where we can find the labyrinth ball at which is located right over here in the corner in this room at the top. As you can see, you can find a flower swords ball in this opened little chest. So yeah, go ahead and pick that up. And nice, so now let's go ahead and take this back to the labyrinth puzzle, which that's located where Duke's at in this place. All right, so I'm back here at Duke. Now let's go ahead and insert the flower swords ball on this labyrinth. And by doing that, we have to solve this little puzzle by tilting the castle. Oh, so it's pretty cool. You know, each area has its own theme. But yeah, this is the taste of uh, Castle Dimitres. Bam! Kind of reminds me of Pinball, for real. But yeah, as you can see, you get an achievement for solving the first one once again. And we get the and we get the Crimson Skull from this one, which this is worth 8k. Not a bad amount for the castle, since that is still early in the game. Also something pretty neat about this one is the castle lights up too, when you officially solve it. But that was a pretty neat little addition that the developers added in with this. The lights will however eventually go out. But yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the next metal ball location. Which you're going to have to progress far enough into the story while you're at the Beneveniento's place. If you've already got out of the castle and you missed that labyrinth, fortunately you're not going to be able to get back in and get it. But at least you know now that nothing special really happens when you have them all in your inventory. So you're really just missing out on 8k. I'm not going to lie, it is a nice little bonus if you know exactly where the metal ball is located at because it's not difficult to find. But it's something not to of course stress about or anything. However, these other skulls are worth quite a bit more. Um, this next one is going to be worth 15k, so we're about double the amount of the previous one. This one can be once again found at the Beneviento's place. I'm going to be starting here after completing the whole dollhouse area and getting past that creepy baby monster and whatnot. Yeah, I'm going to be starting from this point for reference. I just got done with the boss fight and picking up the flask within the uh, dollhouse boss fight area. And now from here, I'm actually going to show y'all where this metal ball is. And then I'll show you where the labyrinth is. So yeah, let's just head up these flight of stairs here from the graveyard. And then we'll bust the left when we hit the top of these stairs. And then we'll bust the right. And then we just want to head back here through this vinery tunnel system. And when we exit out of this, we can find a few graves. And right in front of one of these graves, we can find this box that we can open up. And within this box is the metal ball that we need for this labyrinth. As you can see, it's called the Sun and Moon Ball. Now we're going to have to go to the Gardener's Shack, which that's located from here, this way. Through this binary tunnel, and through this gate here. And right up these stairs, we'll find the Gardener's Shack. And within here will be the second labyrinth puzzle, as you can see. So yeah, let's go ahead and place the Sun and Moon Ball on this, and complete this one. Got it tilted. Ooh. No! Man, this ain't no joke. 
this is actually pretty difficult. Oh! Nice. Get it. So yeah, this is the experience with the second one and what happens afterwards. So make sure to also grab this treasure too, which like I mentioned before, this one is worth 15k if you go to sell it to Duke. Okay, so as for the third ball in Labyrinth Puzzle, it's going to be located over at Moreau's area. It's actually going to be located toward his laboratory, as you can see here on this sign. Yeah, we're going to actually have to use the crank right here to open up this door. I've actually covered this in a previous video because there's an extremely powerful weapon up in his laboratory called the Wolfsbane. If you're interested in that, I'll have a link to it in the description. It's a really good weapon to get your hands on and I highly recommend not passing it up during your playthrough because it is beneficial. As you can see, here's where I'm located at on the map for a little reference for you. And by the way, don't worry about missing the crank or anything. It's a key item within the main story. You will have it after you're done with the Monroe area. Just make sure you unlock his laboratory door with it. Anyways, let's go ahead and progress through this door and just head up the path here. So for the ball, it's actually located when you get to these carcasses right here piled up. You just want to turn around and go through this opening in the gate and the ball will be right here within this shrine thing yeah as you can see it's labeled mermaid ball anyways as for the puzzle we just want to run back to the windmill that we just came out of after defeating Monroe you know the one that has the elevator underneath it this one right here yeah once you get back here you just want to go on the other side of this windmill and the labyrinth will be located right here and as you can see this one is green looks pretty sweet but yeah uh, we're gonna have to do the same thing that we've done in the previous ones we're gonna have to tilt this labyrinth puzzle in different directions down to where it needs to go which it needs to go right there on top of that lighthouse so let's go ahead and do this all right So far, so good. Oh, this is pretty cool. Oh, what? I have to say, this is really unique. I like how they added, you know, just little things like this where you have to actually tilt the puzzle and whatnot to get the ball rolling. It kind of reminds me of Zelda a little bit. Breath of the Wild, that I had to think about it. Not just a pinball machine. Alright, we got it. This one wasn't so bad. For me, anyways. Didn't have any difficulties with that one. As usual, we get a little celebration for the After Effects when we complete it. I love that. And as you can see, we get this skull, too. Which this one's worth 25k to Duke. And it's super easy to acquire. But yeah, anyways, now let's go ahead and get into the last and final one. This one is the most tedious to actually get the metal ball and the hardest labyrinth to actually complete, at least to me. Oh my gosh, I had some trouble with this one for a little bit. But let's first start off here with getting the ball mold that we'll need. This will be located in Heisenberg's factory, a little after this part where you have to destroy this engine that's controlling this fan. This fan will then turn into a staircase, which is what we'll need to go on. It's pretty creative. But yeah, once we're up here, we'll then just have to head over here through this door and then bust the left and head up these stairs. Back against this wall over here, we can find this cart that we can push. And if we push it out of the way, a tunnel will then be revealed that we can crawl through. And at the end of this tunnel, it'll open up into this secretive room. And within this room, we can find this case that we can open up. And within this is where we can find the ball mold. As you can see, here's exactly where it's at on the map next to the grinder shaft. A little bit more reference over where this ball mold is. It's going to be a little before where this scene happens. Where you get sucked into this fan here and you gotta shoot it before it cuts you up. So yeah, hopefully you're able to find it. 
it can be kind of tricky to discover. But yeah, once you have the bowl mold, you then just have to head back to the area where you are able to mold things. It's the most important area within Heisenberg's factory. It's the area where you have to go every time to make the key items to get through this place. So yeah, now let's go ahead and place this ball mold on the casting machine to make, you know, the ball that we need for the labyrinth puzzle. All right, so we got what we need now. Now let's go ahead and return back to Duke on the elevator. Okay, so yeah, the reason why I'm using Duke as a reference is because it also shows what level we are on within the factory. As you can see, we're on B4. And yeah, from here, we just want to head over next door within these double doors. We can find the labyrinth puzzle. And like usual, we're going to have to try to get the ball down to where it needs to go. So, yeah, let's go ahead and place this in and try our best to get it down to where it needs to go. Here goes nothing. Oh, shoot. Alright. Gotta pass the first part. Let's go on down. Uh oh. Ooh! Oh! Yes! We went down. Just at the nick of time. No! Alright, there's uh, one fail. <laughs> but I figured it's better to show it off like this, you know. Show the fails. Just because not everything is perfect. Oh my gosh! Third time's a charm, right? Who the heck made this puzzle? They did a good job. <laughs> it's really difficult. And puzzling. Okay, there we go. I think I'm on the right track. Yep. That is a really trick. Oh my gosh, no, the trolley has left. Catch a ride. No, wait, what did I get stuck on? Come on. All right, change it to point of view. And slide on in. There we go. Come on. Nope. All right. Ooh, there's the trolley. Oh, thank goodness for that bounce back. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Tilt this way. Wait, what? Why are we going back that way? What do I have to do? Oh. Here goes nothing! Yes! I think I did it. We... We... Catch a ride! Yeah! Nice. Yeah, this one was by far the toughest. At least for me. Oh my gosh. Struggled. But inside this, these remains are actually worth 30k. You get a pretty decent chunk there. But yeah, I guess that's about wrapping up this video over the Labyrinth Puzzles in Resident Evil 8 Village. Hopefully this does help you out in some kind of way. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.